This is the Experience More Tour. My name is Marshall and I'm the facilitator uh, with the Table Talk series. And today we are coming at you with REI Co-op. REI Co-op makes incredible products that are accessible to so many people. So much has to go into thoughtfully designing these products such that they fit a wide variety of people for a breadth of activities that the REI customer engages in. This attention to detail includes not only sourcing the perfect zipper pull, the best suspender holder, but also obsessing over what laminate packages to include in the products. Today, we have the person who is responsible for this obsession, Britt Berg. Not only does she know so much about tailoring and fit, but I challenge you to find a person who knows more about sourcing quality components and applying them with absolute detail and perfection in, in these products. And she's a crusher in the outdoors, and so she gets to use these products and test them. Britt, how are you doing today? Great, Marshall. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well, thanks. Uh, I'm super curious to hear what you have to talk about. Very excited to show the crew the first share, and then we'll talk about some of the other products that we do as well. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Britt Berg. Stellar introduction. Thank you very much, Marshall. I've been lucky to be designing technical outerwear for REI for a decade now. Um, background in a lot of different sports, as Marshall mentioned, um, and I love that I get to combine my obsession and passion into my profession in outerwear design at REI. I'll speak into the co-op values that we infuse into all our products. First, outdoor first. The products that I'll be talking about today are sports specific, whether it's resort riding or backpacking, day hiking. We make sure that we've thought through every single detail that we possibly can to make sure that it's outdoor first. They're also for everyone. We're pushing more and more into a breadth of size ranges. Um, and we also make sure that they're cut for layering um, and for movement, so fit a broader array of people. In Trustworthy, I'll speak to the fact that we work with the best factories on the planet. When previously we were going to Vietnam or overseas, we would walk down the production line and see a lot of our um, partner brands that we sell at REI on that production line. So we know that we're working with the best that also include fair labor and fair trade. And purpose-driven, as you all know, we infuse a portion of all of our proceeds back into getting people outside or advocating, advocating for conservation in the lands we love. In the first chair, but across all of the co-op brands goods, we're working really hard to reduce our carbon footprint. I'll be able to speak to that specifically in the first chair styles. Um, we've been working in 3D for a few seasons now. In minimizing waste, with every design we do, we check the pattern to make sure that we're not creating wasteful offcuts, that we're using like every scrap of fabric that we can. And again, raising the bar on fair labor, ensuring that we're working with factories that support their people. Since 2020, all REI co-op goods have had at least one attribute that, cont that contributes to our goals, and we've even been able to infuse more season over season. 50% of all product contain at least one attribute, and so we've got recycled goods, we've got fair trade, and we've got blue sign um, included in most of our products. So I'll start here with the most fun part of um, getting out there and using this stuff. In the design process, one of the most important steps is making sure that it works right and it works well and it works for a long time. So after designing, working through the 3D, working through our prototypes, we were able to do something that we hadn't before, which was send our field testers in Argentina and New Zealand prototypes or field test samples so that they could wear them. For a long time, REI had only done field testing in the US. Because of our production cycle, our, our samples were landing in, say, August or September, not the best time to test snow gear in the Northern Hemisphere. So we worked with our crew. We found some people in the Southern Hemisphere, sent them out, and I have on very good um, knowledge that that guy on the right, he's still wearing that jacket. And we designed these. I think he got it in 2018 or 2019. And that's me on the left. I was able to take this gear up. I think it was March right before everything went to production um, and give it like four days in the backcountry in BC. So very important aspect of it. We think it through, but then we also have to take it through its paces in the field. 
in the power of cooperative design, another aspect of this that we hadn't done before, um, you know, we've done field testing and we've, you know, definitely have like design critiques with our crew and sometimes bringing in other REI employees, but we took it a couple steps further in the launch of the fall 20 snow gear. We pulled in about 20 REI employees from the Seattle area who identified themselves as intermediate skiers and snowboarders. Their assignment was to bring in their goods, their full kit, which is the image you see in that upper right-hand corner. We wanna see your helmet, your gloves, your jacket, your underlayers, please wash it so it's not stinky, um, your socks, your boots, all of it, so we can see how it works together. Then we put each of these people in either the men's or the women's kit, and we have them like, feel it. Like, how does it zip up? Where are the pockets? When they go into a squat, does it feel good? And it was great because it challenged some of our assumptions. Myself and my development partner, Madeline Long, who's also an avid skier, you know, we had some things where like, we think it should be this way. But in talking it through with our co-op people, we pushed into a couple of details, like some people like to wear their glove over their cuff and some people like to wear it under. And so we tweaked the fit so that we could encompass the the loves and the likes of more of our people. So that's the power of cooperative design. Getting into the styles, they were incredibly fun to design. The way the design process works is I work with a strategy and merch team. They come up with, you're going to make these Gore-Tex jackets. Cool. Very excited about that. And this was the first time in many years REI had worked on snow product. We hadn't offered skiing or snowboarding specific goods for some time. I was very honored to be able to do this as um, I've been spending about 30 winters on snow as much as I possibly can. So with these, then from that initial idea, I work with our materials team. They interface with Gore. We work together to make sure that we're landing exactly the right package of face fabric and laminate. The next time when you're in the store, go take a look at the first chair. The exterior is a really cool bi-component weave. So it's a plain weave, meaning it doesn't have a lot of color variation, but it has some highs and lows in that polyester face that make it feel really durable while keeping it nice and quiet as polyester tends to be a little bit less noisy than nylon. In designing it with the team, it's mountain-minded. So fully taped, two-layer Gore-Tex. Two-layer means we've got that face fabric, the Gore membrane, and then we have a hanging liner inside the jacket, which in this case is fully recycled. With these styles, we packed as many pockets onto them as we possibly could. Knowing that these were built more for resort riding, people may or may not wear a pack, but we ensured that with, you see, two chest pockets, two hand pockets, one sleeve pocket, one interior zipper pocket and one gigantic mesh pocket on the inside, maybe you didn't need to wear a pack. Plus the bibs have two more pockets, actually three more pockets that I'll get into. So storage galore. Um, and we even, those pockets, especially on the men's jacket and both the men's and women's bibs are so big, they became known as the sandwich pocket. So we built three season versatility into these, knowing that we wanted them to be rideable, skiable from First chair on opening day, which is November, December, days are shorter, it's colder, all the way to last chair in, you know, maybe April in Washington, May and other places. We've got all the versatility built in. It snugs down in the hood, the cuff and the hem to hold in heat on those cold days. Then you can really open up the pit zips on those days when you need to dump some heat. Say you get down to the bottom after a wicked run, you need to cool down a second before you get on the chair. That's your opportunity, open those pit zips. And then when you cool down, close them back up. So those are some of the like high level details. And then I can go into some very specific details as I have the jacket right here. Some of the things that we built into this one were top to bottom, a what we call a helmet friendly hood. Now you see on some of the other styles that we sell at REI from our vendor partners, they have a helmet compatible hood. In talking to our cooperative crew, very few people actually ride with their hood on, but we wanna be able to batten down, pull that hood up over our helmet when we're on the chair. So we cut it just a little bit bigger than normal. Not too big though, so that you can't snug it down on a day when you're say walking from the car to the lift and you're carrying your helmet, but you just have a beanie on. That way you can snug it up, button it down on the chair, or just wear it over a beanie when you're not actually riding. So that's our helmet-friendly hood. 
We also had a lot of fun, as mentioned with those cuffs, making sure that they're just the right size. In addition to being able to go over or under, we made the cuff hook and loops way bigger than normal. Um, and when I say normal, I mean like our zero dry or storm bolt. By having this be really big and it even has a spot just at the edge where there is no Velcro, makes it easier to grab with a mitten or a glove. And we cut intentionally down the middle of this, the loops, or excuse me, the hook side, so that it folds just a little bit. So when wearing, it's a little bit more supple if you do wanna tuck it under your glove or mitten. So one more detail where, you know, making it much bigger, hopefully gives our wearer just a little bit better experience. It does have a snow skirt, kind of table stakes, as we say, necessary for a snow product. Our snow skirt, has a little bit of a gripper at the bottom. What that does, I'll hold it up, the, uh, the gripper at the bottom of the style sticks to your pant. And that means when you do like a big movement, you know, or yeah, basically a more dynamic movement, it stays in place. And this is another way that the jacket keeps in more heat. A snow skirt, because it's sealed to the body, will hold in just a little bit more heat than a jacket that doesn't have a snow skirt. So nice and sticky, stays in place and adds a little bit more warmth. Then that interior pocket that I mentioned before, um, this is where we had a lot of fun and I get to explore my full um, obsession with pockets and snow sports. First, we made it out of a stretch mesh. So you can stick something in here and it will always kind of snap back. Plus, if you stick something in here that has snow on it, that snow can filter out because it's an open mesh. But at the bottom, we included some of that recycled lining so that if you ever put something in the bottom that's, you know, say you've got a sharp edge of your goggles or something like that, it won't abrade the mesh. So building some durability into the style. And then you see this tiny little triangle right here. That's a drainage hole. So one more way that if you put something that's wet in here, it'll help filter out the water or the snow. So that's the interior and exterior of the first chair jacket. Getting into the bibs. Um, these were so fun. Um, being able to like really push it, um, build in a lot of features that we hadn't done before um, was great. You'll know that we do make the powder bound, which is a non-gore high bib. These are intentionally our first chair mid Gore-Tex bibs. First, we selected a nice quiet polyester that also has stretch. So it has a subtle stretch, even though it's a gore membrane. So again, when you're going into a squat, railing a turn, the pant is gonna give with you a little bit. It also has pleats interior and exterior. So again, a little bit of a generosity there. It has soft touch details. I'll get into this a little bit more when I actually hold up the pant, but we were able to source a lot of things that just made it just a little bit more thoughtful. And then again, built for first chair to last day. This, like the jacket, lots of pockets, it has the two big pockets that you can see on the right. Plus it has a small security pocket at the top of the bibs. I'll mention that these, they are a mid bib intentionally. This is a question that's come up. Why aren't these a high bib? Well, first we do offer that in a different style, but having a mid bib means you're not having as much material cover your chest or your back. So it's just a little bit more breathable. That was one way we made it Again, first chair, opening day, all the way to closing day in the spring. Um, we also have side vents, so ventilation. You can open up these side vents that are easy running zip, uh, Vizlan zippers, just like we can open the pit zips in the jacket. So getting into the actual bib, it was incredibly fun to dial into every single detail that we possibly could. First, we found a nice soft heathered elastic for those suspenders. Some elastics you'll feel, they might be a little bit stiffer. Some, if they're too brushed, might be sticky. We found this one that was both soft and smooth enough on the backside so it doesn't stick to, say, your fleece or your merino base layer. And then taking it a step further, we found some trims to make it that much more comfortable. Found something I'd never seen before, a squishy tri-glide. Um, it works, it's the adjustability on the front of the bib. And we did that intentionally, even though these aren't necessarily made to wear with a pack, someone might be wearing a pack or say they have their skis over their shoulder. This just has a little bit of give, so it's less likely to dig into your shoulder or your collarbone. 
We also worked with our in-house team at the Mag Lab, and we 3D printed our initial suspender keeps, later went into production, but again, nice and soft, really supple, so you don't feel this ever dig into your back if you are wearing a pack. This style has a nice soft knit across the back. Again, just one more way to make it a little bit more comfortable, has that give. And then the way that we made these really snowboarder and ski specific was down at the cuff. The volume of a ski boot is bigger. They had like a bigger ankle and then bigger volume from the ankle into the main part of the boot. Snowboarders tend to have lower volume boots. So the same pant is going to wear on the wear just a little bit different. So first skiers, they have a tendency with their edges to cut the inside of their pants. So I found this great Cordura I share with our pack team um, to prevent cutting the inside of the pants. Extends up nice and high, pretty burly. Then as I mentioned snowboarders with those lower volume boots, the pant might have a tendency to fall down further, either, you know, drag a little bit or, you know, get caught in a high back. So for the snowboarders, we wrap that exact same super tough Cordura all the way around the hem, you know, just giving a little bit more protection and durability to the style. And then I'll talk about my absolute favorite feature. With these, so I'll show you front of the bib, and then now we're looking at the side view. We built these in such a way, and it was super fun to work with our patterning team to nail this exactly right, so that you have this zipper on the side. First, it opens from the bottom, nice big vent. Get too hot at the bottom of the lift, open it up, shut it down, and you cool down. We have a snap at the top, and you'll notice that there's a second zipper pull. That is so this style is designed so that the suspenders are all attached to the front of the bib. Release that snap, unzip, and the full back falls away. We call this the drop trow, and it is how we answer nature's call. Uh, you don't even have to take your jacket off when you head into the bathroom. Just making it just that much easier, and again, like, you know, making the experience a little bit more seamless. So that is the first chair, Cortex bib. Getting into the zero dry. We designed these, I think in 2018 or 2019, and they've been one of our best styles. Again, using a nice, soft, quiet polyester for the face. You'll notice in the image on the right, he has two different materials. The darker blue is a little bit, I think it's a slightly heavier, um, I think like 112 GSM. And then the main body is just a little bit lighter. That slightly thicker, heavier fabric gives us just a little bit more durability, shoulders down to the elbows. And it is in both jackets. We just featured a solid colorway for her. They're nice and lightweight. They don't have pit zips intentionally. With these, we built in what we call core vents. You can open up the hand pocket and it's lined with mesh. And that ensures that on a day when you need to protect yourself from rain, it's warmer, you wanna vent out some of the heat, you can open those hand pockets and then vent some of that out. They are really lightweight. We shaved as many details off this one as possible, but made sure that they're still, they have all the features you need, nothing you don't. Um, they are really lightweight. They are stowable as the style packs away into its left hand pocket. They do have those hand pockets, as mentioned, that are core vents. And in these styles, and for all the styles that we might be wearing a backpack, we fit them specifically with one of our 65 liters to our 22 liter flash packs. The reason why is that if the hand pocket extends all the way down to the hem, something might get stuck once you put on your hip belt. By cutting the pocket so that they're higher on the garment, that won't happen. You won't drop, say, chapstick in your pocket, put on your hip belt, and then not be able to access that because it's trapped under the hip belt. So that's the reason why those are cut higher on the body. And then again, adjustability for all conditions. We've got a nice, secure, easy way to a two um, a two point adjustment on the front of the hood, a single hand pull on the back, cuff, smaller, nicer hook and loop adjustments, and then single handed pull at the hem. And then I'll speak to a few of the details. Um, with the Zero Dry Gore-Tex pants, again, built for backpacking. These have that same place durability 
You can't see it because they're solid, but we have that slightly heavier Gore-Tex over the knee and the bum, just higher durability and abrasion resistance in those areas. They're also articulated. And this is something that I haven't talked about with any of the styles. The first chair jacket, bib, and zero dry jacket all have articulation. And what that is, it's a really subtle patterning change. So the way the pieces of fabric are cut out and sewn together means that your elbow is pre-bent or your knee is pre-bent. We do that over the bum as well. So that when you put something on, it's just an easier, more comfortable fit. You already feel like the jacket is conforming to you. It's a subtle tweak, but it's something we build into all of our styles. Again, quiet and lightweight, fully seam take throughout. We have a lightweight adjustment at the, at the waist. And we do that so over days on the trail, we've heard that a lot of people, you know, say they have different layering systems. In camp, they might be over fleece. On the trail, it might be over just base layer or just shorts. Having that easy little waist adjustment ensures that A, it's adjustable over days on the trail. And also say you put something in your pockets, you can snug it in and it won't pull your pockets down as much as if we didn't have it. Then we have a nice cuff adjustment at the hem. You can do a single-handed pull and we also have ankle zippers. We built the ankle zipper height to a very specific place so that you can get these pants on or off with your boot on. And that's a nice thing on the trail. Say it's been raining in the morning, sun comes out, everything's drying out, but you don't wanna take your muddy boots off, expose your socks. This way you can just easily get the pant off over your boot, tuck them in your pack, keep trekking. Back to you, Marshall. Thanks for letting me speak through all these designs and these details. Right. It's super fun to hear your passion and just like to get that tour through the person who actually made the product. Right. So what a, what a special treat to be able to see and have you call out some of those design features that maybe we would not be able to point out to customers otherwise. So thanks for sharing those and great to get that insight. <clears throat> Could I do one more plug? Yeah, absolutely. Um, That'd be great. What we always need, know that the designers, we look at every single review. We comb through the reviews when we're designing a new product based on an old one. We look at like styles when we're creating a new product. And sometimes if a lot of issues come up via reviews, we're able to tweak something in, in season. So to the frontline crew, please ask our people to write reviews, whether they love it or they want to point out an issue we have with it. So thank you for pushing that out, making sure that we get as many reviews as we can to make the product even better. You know, that's really great to know that you're reading all those reviews and combing through them and parsing them apart. Uh, it really is nice to have more of that kind of, it's almost democratic uh, input into the development of some of these products. And so uh, that's great to know. And um, thanks for sharing that with us. Now that Britt has shown us a lot of the features, I would love to take a little time to look at some of the laminate packages that are incorporated into these products. And from Gore-Tex's perspective, we're gonna provide laminate packages and work closely with REI Co-op to uh, be optimal for specific end uses. But for sure, all of our laminate packages are gonna contain our core benefits of durably waterproof, windproof, and breathable. And so within these core benefits, we can extend uh, the comfort range of an end user in the outdoors. But we, we need to parse these a little bit closer to specific end uses so that they're absolutely optimized. And you know, with, with the three uh, garments that REI Co-op brand is currently, uh, or three categories that REI Co-op brand is currently using, um, we have specific laminate packages for these end uses. So something like the first chair, right, developed for inbounds skiing and snowboarding, like Britt just talked about. Um, there is a garment called the Storm Bolt as well, and that's more of a backpacking oriented uh, trekking type of garment. So that's going to utilize technology for that. And then there's the Zero Dry, which is this fantastic um, kind of all around, highly packable, very lightweight, um, very usable, uh, waterproof, breathable, windproof garment. So let's look at the laminate packages for each of these because they are different. In the first chair, we are utilizing what we call a two-layer technology. So what that means is there is a face fabric, and as Britt talked about, it's a polyester, very soft face fabric that is directly laminated to our one of our membranes. And so in that, it creates two layers. Now to protect the membrane and to create a coziness, there's a drop liner hung on the inside of that as well. 
So um, as that is not directly laminated to the membrane, that's why we call this two-layer technology. So that's the first chair jacket and bibs. And the, the benefit of you know, this particular technology is that it allows for softness of the face fabric, but also have that drop liner in there um, and allows for pockets and um, additional configuration options in the jacket. The Storm Bolt uses a three-layer technology. So that's going to have a very durable face fabric directly laminated to a membrane. And then we're going to laminate a backer material to that, which is in this case, a Trico knit backer. And so a Trico knit is a style of knit that incorporates quite a few knots, but is still relatively open. And you can see in that bottom right um, a microscope, that's about 60 times microscope blow up of the backer technology. A backer is there to uh, not only protect the membrane, but it also adds that next to base layer comfort. And so in the Trico knit, um, because of all those little knots, it actually raises it up off your skin or base layer quite a bit. It makes it very smooth sliding, um, but it also gives a place to stage your sweat and uh, before it gets converted into moisture vapor and then uh, transported through the membrane into the outside. And so it really does a good job of wicking the moisture out on getting it out of the jacket altogether. So it aids in that breathability. So that's the Storm Bolt jacket. And then we transition to the zero dry jacket and pants. And this is gonna be back to like that two layer, almost two and a half layer construction. So that uses a face fabric, in this case, a very lightweight face fabric directly bonded to our membrane. And then there's a microscopic layer underneath that uh, gives it that charcoal color or silver color. And um, that does protect the membrane a little bit without having a third layer. So that changes the next to skin comfort a little bit, but it also lightens up the package and allows for more breathability. So the Zero Dry is absolutely optimized for packability, lightweight, and breathability. So those are different laminate packages that our team is going to work with Brit's team to make sure that we align the proper package for the intended in usage of each of these garments. And so they're absolutely optimized for in, in usage. What's key here is that not only are we looking at these construct these laminate packages, we're actually testing these laminate packages to make sure they're going to work for these in uses. And then in that, in fact, we test that whole design. So as Brit creates new prototypes, they get sent back to our labs. And then we're gonna test that finished garment to ensure that the hood designs um, are up to our waterproof standards, the cuff designs, the zippers and all of that. So we're gonna test that in a series of tests, one of which is our rain room test. And only after we kind of understand our laminate packages, have all the testing, everything passes, can we then put our logo onto there. And so our addition of our logo and our name into these products stands for more than just a laminate technology. It stands for this whole sort of commitment to quality and performance that, that comes from these additional tests that go into these products. So I really wanted to highlight the Gore-Tex end. Britt talked a lot about what she does and I just wanna show a little bit about what that partnership brings and why that Gore-Tex name stands for so much in those products. So thanks to REI Co-op, Thanks to Britt. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time today to work with us and our community so that we can see what you're up to. And I can't wait to see what's next, Britt. Um, and have a great day out there, everybody. And thanks for watching.